So, let's get started, I suppose. That, th that thing is the devil. Last week, you got mad at me for disembodied orgasm hippo, so, so I thought I would found something, something worse. Different. I thought I would give you Electro Kitty instead. <clears throat> Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, and brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And I like to think of tonight as the night of amazing headlines. Mm. Because I think just about all of these are fantastic, concluding with one of the best headlines we have ever had on this show. The last one is just better better. than last week with the pig, with the beer and the thing. Better. Wow. <laughs> but for or the those, Mad Libs one, I think this one, this the, the fir very first headline we have tonight kind of uh it even tops the, the 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 one with the mad libs one if it doesn't it comes damn close um daniel hotcock cooper convicted <laughs> of sex with a land rover see oh look, at, oh look at him i told you yeah let's let's there, let's there. Let's bring him up on the screen. There he is. See Mr. Daniel Cooper there. I told you. This is me. He is a happy looking man. A man with the self-proclaimed nickname Hotcock. He chose this for himself. And I would like to say, I would like to quote Dean Winchester. Well, paraphrase. You can't just give yourself a nickname. Yeah, I would That's not how I would almost forgive it if this was his like Christian name somehow, if his last name was Hotcock, because, you know, you get weird last names. Do you Pop know up. what did I, I we I went to the Big E the, on Sunday with the boyfriend and there was a state trooper there and I read her name tag. It was a female trooper and I felt so bad for this poor girl. Her name tag, her last name was Jack and Hoff. See, that's that and happens. I'm like, Oh. The childhood she must have had. Exactly. Like, good God. A court in Wales uh, recently convicted Dan Cooper, 24, of indecent exposure. That's he's 24. Good God. Life has not been kind to you, Hotcock. <laughs> um, that's the title of a book right there. I don't know what that looks about, but that's the title of a book. Um, he's been banned from going outside between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. on Friday, Saturdays and Sundays for the next three months. The order stems from an August 18th incident where Cooper, who is known by the nickname Hotcock, was caught on surveillance video getting naked and then grinding against a blue 4x4 Land Rover Discovery. Court, Cooper told the court he was so drunk at the time he did not remember his auto erotic. That is a pun. Auto erotic. Ah, uh, I see what you did there. Did not remember his autoerotic encounter until he saw the video. Really, the Land Rover was not available for con re The Land it, Rover was not available for comment. It just felt too violated. It can't talk about it yet. Earlier in the evening, witnesses saw him bumping and grinding with the counter at a kebab shop and simulating sex on the floor with his pants around his ankles. He was also seen walking down the street. His pants pulled down. Cooper, a father of three, also urinated in the streets. When he was arrested, he admitted to officers that he rarely drank. You know, you should probably keep up that practice because it doesn't seem to be working out for you very well. Can you imagine being the kid whose dad fucked the counter <laughs> the stop and a car in public? <laughs> Hotcock Jr. 
<laughs> Trooper Jack and Hoff's childhood is looking pretty good right now. <laughs> okay, I love. Okay, Big Jim Slade. Honk means no. There are people. This is that's a thing though. That's a legit fetish. Like there, are, there are people that have sex with cars. This is a thing. Like I don't know how you do that. Maybe you stick it in the tailpipe. I, I don't know what the logistics are. Maybe the gas are. tank. Maybe, maybe the gas tank. But they're like, that's a, I remember, I forget what documentary I saw on them, but there are people with that fetish. Like there's a lady who wanted to marry the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, like, talked about, yeah. I, I, you know, I mean, you know, more, more power to you if it works for you. My other wife is a car. I mean, there's a lot of nice. middle aged men with shrinking dicks who can say that these days. Yeah, let's be honest. I, I just it <sighs> filling the tank. You're doing it wrong. Mm. Yes. Well, you know, you put sugar in someone's gas tank. It'll mess them up. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, your oil has a strange level of viscosity. I don't know what's going <laughs> on there. And remember, I, I have the ex-boyfriend who taught me that semen will eat the paint off a car. That's not a lesson anyone should need to learn. I didn't learn like. It wasn't a practical lesson. It was a lecture. <sighs> Just for the record. Uh, all right. Well, we, we have uh, even more. Non and the next nonsense, of course, there's only two places this one could happen. It's Florida or Japan. In this case, it's Japan. We often try. I was just talking about advertising, I had a big old rant about advertising. We try to dress stuff up in certain ways to present it to the public to make it more palatable, at least when it comes to advertising. They have all sorts of ways of doing this. You know, they come up with slogans or cute, you know, little designs or logos or mascots. And. Mm -hmm. There is a, a a organization in Japan just came up with a nice, cute, cuddly mascot to put a nice face on something, except in this case, that nice face on something was a prison. Prison uses cuddly mascot in image makeover. Tokyo, a Japanese prison housing a range of convicted criminals has unveiled a cuddly life size mascot that bosses hope will change the jail's forbidden image. Officials say, As oh God, damn it. Asahikawa, 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 I said it. Uh, Asahikawa prison in Hokkaido is too often thought of as a dark place with imposing gray walls and not as a place of rehabilitation. They hope Katakuri-chan, a nearly two meter humanoid with a huge square face and enormous purple flower for hair, will make people understand the true nature of the institution. It kind of looks like Rod Bogloyevich. <laughs> How the fuck is this supposed to make anyone understand prison? I don't understand why prison needs a mat. Like, is he the warden now? <laughs> What's uh. the what are the functions and duties of the prison mascot? What is it? It's Saturday morning Oz is what it is. Like, I mean, I get they want to, you know, change the image to a place of rehabilitation. And that's lovely. I just. I'm confused. As to what the mascot's function is. Apparently, they had a weekend fair at the prison. It's an annual event that draws nearly 12 drew 1700 people up from 1200 last year, partly thanks to the character which greeted visitors and played with children. Who is bringing their kids to a prison fair? Who is doing this? Well, uh, presumably some of those inmates have children. Well, yeah, but a fair? Yeah, I mean. Where they can sell the license plates they make. I do. Yeah, this is like super jail, isn't it? 
It really, it looks, it looks like the anime version of Rod Blagojevich. It does. The hair, you know. Yeah. You ever watch Blagojevich on those, on on any I don't think that's what they were going for. When Blagojevich turned his head, his hair took like a second. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Jimmy Johnson's the same way. Maybe that's why he needs extends. I don't know. Oh, okay. Wheel Justice says, come on, there'll be cotton candy and animals and soap topping competitions. (laughs) <laughs> Mike says, how is a prison fair any worse than, say, the New Jersey State Fair? Oh, that was bad. I just, <sighs> Mike, have you ever even been to New Jersey when it's not underwater or on fire? <laughs> some of it is lovely. I've driven through New Jersey and they don't lie. But I've I've smelled the smell. The smell, unfortunately, is a reality. I yeah. have actually we drove we drove through New Jersey and I had the windows down and I realized something was Let's weird. Right up. They went right back up. I'm not lying. It has a sm- but yeah. How do we get from prison to Disney World? There's a there's a gap there. Unless is you there, work at, unless you work at is Disney there, World. Well, if you work at Disney World, it's a difference, but. I don't know. I mean, I can see where Disney World would feel a little imprisoning. Do you know? I'm angry at Disney World. Oh, no. Oh, hello, Tangent. <laughs> there is on Disney World. There's an abandoned feature called Tom Sawyer's Island, because who really cares about Disney's Tom Sawyer anymore? Yeah. So the feature has been abandoned for years. And like kids go and sneak out there and get drunk and stuff. But that sounds few, very Tom Sawyer, actually. A few years back, there was a small but vocal movement to turn, because Disney owns ABC, to turn it into Lost Island. That sounds like And the they didn't maker. do it, and I'm Aww. so angry, because I would fucking live there. They would make the hatch that you could go down I in. Know. Yeah. And there'd be animatronic polar bears? A smoke monster and Dharma food. I would just move there. And you know what would end up happening is you'd see a story about a Connecticut woman dragged from Disney World by security. No, because I go all Daniel Rousseau on their shit. You never see it coming. So we have this next one, and you mentioned that we needed to look at this one because. You know, this would this next story would not happen without social media, because this is the kind of shit that would just happen and people would fucking ignore it. Or it just wouldn't get that much that much because it'd be one of those things people would tell other people and they'd be like, bullshit, I don't buy bullshit. But thanks to social media, no, no, everyone can experience this. And be terrified by it, because this is this fucked up. It's from the UK. Um. Spooky clown mystery grips Northampton. A spooky clown has been scaring Northampton residents in full costume and makeup. He is red haired and white faced has appeared in several locations in the Abington and Kingsley area. Facebook page now been set up for the clown called Spot Northampton's Clown, which has already achieved over 3000 likes since it went live yesterday. Clown has proved a sensation on social media and has its own Twitter hashtag Northampton clown. According to reports, it is knocked on someone's door and offered to paint their sills, despite having no painting equipment. Yeah. It's okay. That's a problem. And everybody's already talking about floating. Oh, we all float down here. That's what you see right now is is this this guy right here. This is therapy. For ch- this is a this is a conspiracy to to pay for therapists college for their kids. I mean, this right I'll here. Because you're going to have a whole generation afraid of clowns. I got to I'm putting this on the big screen because this is fucked up. But why? Like. Why? Well, I don't want to sign into Yahoo. Why do I have to sign into Yahoo to see the picture bigger? Fuck you, Internet. Why do you do this? Why do you just hang out in public dressed as a clown and offer to paint people's house with no painting? Like, 
has nobody thought to approach this guy and be like, hey, do you need to talk to somebody? I think what's most disturbing is the point. Are you a big fan of John Wayne Gacy? <laughs> That's not someone who needs a fan club. Because maybe you should talk to somebody about that. OK, John the Wizard. It's Bozo's cousin, Bollock. Like, uh, there are other Tim Curry movies that are better. There are. Of course, I guess if he was hanging around in the Frankenfurter outfit, he'd probably just get hit up for tricks. OK, Tarek says, because Santa would have been too easy. I'm just saying. I, it concerns me. That somebody is spending their free time this way. <laughs> this is not a hobby. This is not a but hobby. You know, you know, what's really sad is there is a distinct possibility that this is just somebody who's an honestly nice person who's trying to cheer people up. <laughs> they're freaking everybody out. <laughs> like there is a good chance that this is just a retired grandpa. Hey, kids, you want a balloon? Yeah, who thinks he's doing a nice thing for the community. No. And doesn't understand that clowns aren't really considered cute anymore. Everybody's kind of terrified by them. Thanks, Tim Curry. Well, no, and, I was scared of clowns before fucking Tim Curry. And like, he's freaking her. They're like, there is a chance that this is a well-intentioned person who just doesn't get it. I was, no, I mean, you want to talk about, okay, picture this with clown makeup. Do it's, I have this, to? This is scary enough, right? But you put clown makeup on that shit, you're never sleeping again. Clowns is fucking scary. Uh. So I used, to, I used to know a guy who wanted to be a professional clown. He was the chef at my office job in the kitchen. He thought my name was Carol for like a year. I let him think that. <laughs> Because he, he can't find out where you live. It, his real aspiration was to be a professional clown and break the Guinness World Record for world's largest food fight. You know, I'd like to be part of that. Honestly, that sounds like a lot of fun. That was his goal in life. We've talked about bears on the show before. Bears are not something you want to fuck with. I've I've often used this term and I will continue to use this term. They are furry tanks. They are eight. They, I'm not going to tell the funny story I have because I've been doing that all night. So I'm going to just they, let you go. They, they are armored troop transports that poop is is what a bear is. My so, boyfriend has a longstanding theory that he could fight a bear. Really? Well, oh, yeah. um, he needs to get in line. He really wants a chance to fight a bear, but two little tiny birds got into his car today. <laughs> he parked his car with the windows open and two birds got in and like went all that shit in his car. And he's like, yeah, I don't know about that bear. <laughs> well, he it, it is possible. Um, Fairbanks man punches Grizzly. Oh, my God. I lost the. Uh, you lost the I one. lost the little window with the links in it. There you go. What did you do? I don't know. It's gone. Oh, wait, there it is. OK. A Fairbanks man <laughs> punched a grizzly after the bear entered the camping tent that he and his girlfriend were sleeping in. Um, Jason Lawson and Liz uh, Paul Elko, Paul Elko, uh, were awakened 6 a.m. on Labor Day by shaking in the entrance of a bear head or maybe a paw. At the time, Lawson didn't have his glasses on. He didn't know what part of the bear he made contact with. Whatever part, part of the bear entered the tent, shredded the inflatable pad he was sleeping on. After the encounter, the couple found the jacket Larson had been using as a pillow soaked in bear saliva that reeked to fish. That Gross. nice little, yeah, that nice little detail there. <clears throat> See, this is, I can't show this story to Tom because this is his dream. <laughs> to like encounter a bear in the wild and, and kick its fucking ass. <laughs> So if I were to show him this story, he'd be like, it's possible. I could totally do that oh, on that shit. guy. And then we get eaten. I mean, not that, you know, not that I don't have faith in him. But yeah. the odds just aren't exactly in your favor. Well, you realize that this is this is better than a marriage proposal right here. Honestly, because, you know, you're in a tent with your girlfriend and a bear comes in and you 
punched the fucking thing. And she's like, yep, done. That is pretty hot. That is. Yeah, that that is. You don't even have to ask at that point. It's like, so uh, that's a painting jumper. Yeah. I can understand the instinct because if a fucking bear got in my face and I couldn't run, I'd try it at least. Because what the fuck? Well, he couldn't even see lose? it. He didn't even know what it was. <laughs> like uh, you're a person that doesn't wear corrective lenses. I do actually. See, I, I have contact. Do you? Yeah. I've never seen you in like glasses. So I don't but wear them. I, I look stupid. Blind without either my glasses or my lenses. I look stupid in my glasses. I've no, worn them on don't. the air. You do what you, you gotta look, do. You don't look stupid. I look stupid in glasses. Like, like I am blind. I can see like maybe a foot in front of my face, and then it's all just soup. You know. Yeah, so, I have the same problem. If some random shape entered my sleeping, I would probably start flailing, and then I would realize it's a bear, and I would freak the fuck out. Yeah, this this burglar is strangely furry. Yeah. Hi, I'm Todd Palin, and this is Jackass. <laughs> <laughs> well played, buddy. Well played. Well played, indeed. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> God damn. That is all. That is kind of you know you're you're you're. I mean, that guy. That guy's badass. You kind of hope he got to at least look cool punching it, too, and that it wasn't like. <laughs> no, you, you want to be like, oh, you can, you know, you want one of and those. That's going to be the like, screenshot for this episode, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, making that stupid face. No, it's not because you're it's you're it's different. So, no, <laughs> don't worry. You're safe from that stupid face. But you'd like to hope he looked like a total badass and not like, you know, a flailing psych idiot. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that one. Yeah. Either way, he punched a bear, even if he looks stupid doing it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's one of those things that you, you, at, for any point in your oh, life. Oh, that's forward, cool. Your boyfriend's in a band. Mine punched a bear. You win any fucking argument. Oh, yeah, that's that, that's yeah. kind of awesome. You climbed Mount Everest. I punched a bear. Yeah. You win. Yeah. You just. I punched a bear and lived. Oh, oh. Johnny got a promotion at the bank because Tommy punched a bear. Don't say Tommy because you're encouraging your boyfriend. I know. Right? You shouldn't do that. You're encouraging him. Don't he's like in the other room. With a what guy? Ball. Bear? What? Punched what? Bear? I'll punch a bear. <laughs> and then you got to get a new one. <laughs> a new bear? A new boyfriend. <laughs> well, not if he wins. If that's a big fucking if. But he didn't do too well against those two birds today. So no, no. he thinks one of the birds might still be trapped in his car. And I'm like, if it is, it's dead. <sighs> yeah. You'd know if there was a live bird in your car. Chances are, if it's in the car, it, that's because it gave itself a heart attack and died. <laughs> and you'll know by the smell in a day or two. Um, so. This is another uh, we have another incident. And like I said, these these headlines just keep getting greater and greater. We have another incident of drugs that you shouldn't do. Although this one is just amazing. Because the links this guy went to, are, are, I'm just wow. There you ever been to a demolition derby? No. Well, apparently you can do one with a boat. Half naked man steals boat, rams others at Seattle Marina. Oh, uh, a witness fired a shotgun to stop a half naked man high on drugs who was using a stolen 35 foot boat to ram other boats and dock Sunday night. Police were called the Yacht Club for the report of a man who was ramming boats in the docks with a boat he was piloting during the rampage. <laughs> During the rampage, the man also struck a pier, causing a marine roof to collapse. As many as 10 other boats were damaged. Um, Dave Sevenson, uh, was a witness, said he was afraid the boat thief would kill someone. So he grabbed his shotgun and fired, wounding the suspect thief in the head and the hand. I was trying to scare him. I thought shotgun shells and blasts and it wouldn't kill him. 
And that would have bothered me, but that's what I was trying to do him to stop. It would have bothered me if I killed him, but... I don't... That sentence doesn't really scan. No, it doesn't. Because I thought with shotgun shells and blasts in it that it wouldn't kill him. You don't understand how shotgun work. That's also... That's word salad. That is word salad, yeah. There's... Parts of speech... Yeah. Sprinkled in liberally. I, but, I don't. I don't even understand what that sentence is trying to say. This is another quote from the same witness. It's pretty crazy. I don't know how he would have come in. I don't know how he actually got that boat started. Dave Svensson, you need to work on your ability to communicate like a yeah. person. So this is what happens when... Uh, like, I know you can't edit the quotes of the people you interview because that's unethical, but maybe talk to someone who can speak English. Gold experience. Some people just can't wait for GTA 5. <laughs> yeah, this, this is kind of... This is kind of like the home game. You take a whole bunch of drugs and you go outside and it's kind of like Grand Theft Auto. Except... When you run out of life, you don't end up at the police station. You end up in the morgue. Yeah. It just... <sighs> the wounds were not life... Yeah, the 22-year-old man's wounds were not life-threatening. He remains under guard at the hospital. He can be released and booked into the King County Jail. <sighs> it's... Yeah. Grand Theft Auto is not supposed to be a LARP. That's not how that works. Mm -mm. I will grant you maybe an RPG, perhaps a collectible crate trading card game. Not a LARP. I don't think that would be too thrilling as a trading card game. Oh, my God. I think I might have one for you. Mm. You're not going to like it. <sighs> what did you get? Okay. Uh, okay. I, I. Let me look at this. This. What? <laughs> wow. The quote is so calm. I, I, toothless man, 41, bit his neighbor's manhood, quote, like a sandwich in row over loud music. A toothless man has been found guilty of biting his neighbor's penis, quote, like a sandwich until it bled after an argument over loud music. Jason, 41, who has only one or two teeth, bent over and bit Richard Henderson, 39, after receiving a text message asking him to turn his music down. <laughs> the pair argued, a fight broke out, and Martin bit down on Mr. Henderson's genitals, genitals with so much force, he required stitches. Martin strangely denied the charge and said, quote, the thought of putting a pe man's penis in my mouth, well, it's not for me. Well, not it's, not for me. <laughs> well it's not for me. Not in a million years would I do it. He only admitted to grabbing Mr. Henderson's, quote, bits and bobs as he tried to defend himself during the scuffle. Like a sandwich. Wow, Mr. Henderson. Did you know it just popped into my head? What? Five dollar foot Five dollar foot long. Mr. Henderson, who was wearing pajamas during the attack, was left covered in blood and taken to the hospital where surgeons had to stitch his penis. He was asked about the experience and said, this is another amazing quote, quote, my willy was not attached to the rest of my body. I have never experienced that kind of pain to this day and don't want to experience it ever again. How hard does a toothless man have to bite down? Um, 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 um. Like. He had to have latched on like a fucking pit bull. Uh, an ex Tara says, e eat a dick. You're doing it wrong. No, actually, I think you're pretty much that's pretty much the. Yeah, no, I think you're actually really doing it right. Yes. Definitely for everybody. Maybe this maybe the thinking here, like, you know, the brain can only concentrate on one strong stimuli at a time. 
stimulus. So maybe he felt that if this guy was in pain from having his dick partially bitten off, that he wouldn't care about the loud music anymore. Because brain wouldn't be able to concentrate on his headache. All right. Our final story this week. I have long made this prediction. I will continue to predict it. They're planning. They're plotting. They're going to take us down someday. And they have come up with a new vector to assault us. And that is biological warfare. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you herpes infected monkeys terrorizing Florida. Yes. And I just love the picture the New York Post chose to use of this grinning, happy monkey with this shit eating grin on his face. Because he knows hundreds of rare wild monkeys, some carrying herpes, are on the loose in Florida after a tour guide brought the bought these spunky spunky critters. Wow. To the state long ago. A wildlife official says that three pairs of rhesus monkeys were transported to a park near Ocala in the 1930s. Um, the breed has since boomed, and more than 1,000 of the monkeys now live in the state. State officials have caught more than 700 of the monkeys in the past decade, most of which tested positive for the herpes B virus. Wildlife officials now consider the monkeys a public health hazard. Um, the monkeys were first from maroon on a small island near the Silver River, but the creatures learned to swim. You skipped something really important here. Ah. Uh. Current Silver River tour operator, Captain Tom Olenek, defended transporting animals, claiming people love them. Everybody who comes on the river for a tour wants to see the monkeys, Olenek said. From my point of view, as a naturalist, I think the planet changes naturally and species do move around, whether that is by man or other means. So that's not naturally then. No, that's not. Because that's, technically humans are of nature. But that doesn't count. You say herpes is common virus. Herpes B is not so common and it's not very good for us. Herpes, no, it can be lethal. Herpes B is not the, you know, oh, I've got herpes. No, no, it's not like luggage and shit like herpes. No, no, this is it fucking kill you. And it can be transmitted by being bitten or by them throwing their poop at you. Which monkeys have never been known to do. You know, so yeah. if only they had listened to him, he said that he would let the monkeys loose. When he says he'll let the monkeys loose, then he <laughs> will let the monkeys loose. If only they had listened. This is this is fucked up. So now, OK, Florida's got the giant goddamn pythons invading everything. It's got the fish that fucking walk and eat chihuahuas and shit. No, I'm not making that up. This is a real fucking thing. And now it has a thing of nightmares. And now it has biological warfare monkeys and don't forget at any given time in florida a sinkhole might swallow you <laughs> why is anyone still living there i think it's fair to say god has forsaken florida yes and it is being slowly and painfully smoked <laughs> this is like florida is looking at australia and going huh like i florida can't beat that like one, florida is having like a one state biblical apocalypse with beasts and catastrophes and one does not simply walk into walk Florida. Into no. Because oh. this is, I mean, you know what it is? Somebody got onto Tom Sawyer Island and unplugged the cork of creation. Tara. The man in black is winning. 
that, someone that, says it's not Tom Sawyer Island, it's Discovery Island, whatever. There's an abandoned island in Disney World and it should be the Lost Island and it's not, is my point. And because of that, Florida is being smoked. Yeah, eventually, you know, the, the good thing is, when it comes to Florida, putting up a wall would not be that difficult. Because it's just, you know, whoop, and you're done. It's just, you know, it, they can't get around it. Just, yeah, but do we want to do that to like Cuba and Puerto Rico? Then they're stuck with them. They can have it. Enjoy. You and my, you know what? You get Miami sound machine, but you also get the herpes monkeys. You take the good with the bad. Do you feel like, I think I said this once before, but do you, are you starting to feel like we're living in a real life, not sucky version of the happening? <laughs> Well, like this all of Colorado is underwater. I think California's still on fire. Yeah. New Jersey, which just were just rebuilt from the giant hurricane, is on fire. Sinkholes everywhere. Like nature is kind of over us, I think. <laughs> At least in America. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm I'm saying, you know, Ireland's looking better and better all the time. Like the trees aren't making us kill ourselves. They're just doing it themselves. Canada is just Nature's, laughing at us. Nature is kind of like, fuck you, Americans. We're done. Uh, uh, it's scary. So I, I think I think the first thing we learned this week is the planet's done with our ass. They, they are they're fed to fuck up with us. We're done. And the second thing we learned was he meant it when he said he'd let the monkeys loose. He didn't tell us about the herpes. Fucking herpes monkeys. You know what? I bet the Pentagon right now is going, so um, can we round some of those up and ship them out or something? Or just, is this an option? Because does it count as biological warfare if it comes from... Yes! <laughs> but it's the monkeys who did it, not us! We just, you know, it's gave him a ride. He's with little parachutes. <laughs> we're just being, we're just giving them, a, giving them a ride is all we're doing. You know, just a nice little, we're giving them a, you know, it's, it's a free vacation for the monkey. We're not responsible for the monkey after we, you know, put them someplace else. They, they are their own free agents at that point. <sighs> this is why you're not president. This is why I'm not president. Um... We've learned that uh, clown. What the? F We've learned that in the age of social media, shit that would normally get a pass, not anymore. People will. will yeah, that shit's gonna go everywhere. You don't get to be a creepy clown anymore without people knowing about it. Isn't that fun? Well, why would you want to be a creepy clown without people knowing about it? That's kind of performance art. Yeah, that's attention-seeking behavior. It's fucked. 20 years ago, pe people would have never realized this fucking... This would have been like an urban legend or something. No, dude, I saw this clown one time. He was fucking pointing at me. He wanted to fucking paint my cells. It was weird. Now, it's every... People are like... They got, like, photographic evidence and shit. And shit's weird. Um, We learned that a man not only can attempt to mate with a car, but he can live with the nickname Hotcock. He can give himself the nickname, nickname Hot Hotcock. That doesn't seem like a nickname I'd want to give myself. You know who can't give himself that nickname? A guy who let a man with no teeth bite his dick off. Yeah, don't. That, yeah, that. Yeah, that uh, uh, no. We've learned that sometimes marketing can be taken too far, especially when you're, you're you could potentially have a plushie of your prison mascot. Yeah. I mean. Nah. -uh. You know, Japan is hosting the next Olympics. Maybe the prison mascot will be part of the ceremonies or something. Do you really want your like your five year old going to bed with the prison mascot snuggled up to him? I, it's kind of sweet if you have kids with parents who are inmates that like they don't automatically have a bad image about it you know i kind of i kind of 
I kind of get it. I just don't know what the mascot's job is. You know, they're just keeping a tally and they're like, reasons we're going to hell. And that one just got another little check mark added to it. What you just said there. Why? That's kind of sweet. That's not sweet. That's fucked it up. That's sweet. <sighs> Think about the children, Nash. We've learned that GTA is not. There's no home game of that. Don't don't. Well, there is, but you're not going to win it. No. And you're never going to get to the secret level. And lastly, we've learned, yes, you can punch a bear and live. You just probably shouldn't. Don't and don't tell Tara's boyfriend. 